This is Garrett Toby. Today we will be discussing an inferior turbinate flap for reconstruction after resection of a clival chordoma. This is a case of a young woman who underwent a transnasal surgery internationally for her chordoma. However, the transdural portion of the tumor against the brainstem was left behind, so came back for a re-resection. From her previous surgery, several intranasal options for reconstruction were compromised, including her bilateral nasal septal flaps. We therefore elected for reconstruction of her dural defect with a fasciolata inlay, as well as a fasciolata onlay with fat graft and a right-sided inferior turbinate and lateral wall flap. As you can see here, this is her dural defect following the resection of the transdural tumor. There's a very large uh, septal defect, as you can see here. So we're Dopplering out the arterial supply to the inferior turbinate and then making our initial uh, superior mucosal incision here with a needle tip bovi cautery. I'm bringing this up high onto the lateral nasal wall in order to maximize our distal uh, paddle of the flap, if you will, in order to give us uh, as much distal mucosa to cover her defect as possible. We're gonna then bring this incision along uh, down towards the head of the inferior turbinate, as you can see here. In selected cases, if you prefer, you can also raise this as an extended inferior turbinate flap and bring this incision the whole way down onto the mucosa of the nasal floor or even the nasal septum if you would need it. And then we'll begin to uh, raise this off of the lateral wall with a suction uh, elevator, as you can see here. Near the head of the inferior turbinate, this is some relatively tenacious uh, fibers, but can be come through uh, with uh, blunt dissection, as you can see here getting that proper uh, sub mucoperi osteoplane on the lateral nasal wall, and then transitioning onto the bone of the inferior turbinate as you become, uh, as you dissect more inferiorly. In general, we'll dissect this off the bone of the inferior turbinate and then also remove that bone in a piecemeal fashion. So once that's been dissected off the inferior turbinate bone, that can be removed, uh, and then the dissection can be continued onto the inferior portion of the bone. On the inferior aspect, you can complete this uh, once you reach on the inferior aspect of the bone, if you'd like, if that's enough uh, distance for you. Otherwise, you can peel out the bone and take some of the uh, medial portion of the inferior turbinate mucosa with you as well. Then um, we'll come across that sharply with some scissors as we work uh, posteriorly. One thing to note is that the inferior turbinate flap has a relatively limited uh, reach compared to the nasal septal flap, and I. Uh, it has a little bit of a limitation here in the posterior aspect. So I like to do a releasing incision here as well on the inferior aspect to allow it to rotate a little bit more freely and cover these higher uh, clival defects. Obviously you gotta make sure that you don't uh, come across your pedicle here or compromise your uh, arterial blood supply. But that releasing incision can really help to mobilize the uh, rotatability of this flap. <clears throat> so here we are just ensuring that it's gonna reach our defect, which it will. Then we'll go ahead and place it into uh, the nasal cavity or in the maxillary sinus for uh, safekeeping while we work on the uh, intradural work. So here's my neurosurgical partner, uh, Dr. Van Gumpel, placing a duragen inlay, as you can see here. And we've already harvested our fasciolata, and we'll place that fasciolata in here as an inlay, as you can see here. It's important to make sure that's completely unfurled on the uh, intradural side. And then we went ahead and placed a little bit of Surgicel followed by a fasciolata onlay, as we see coming in here next. That adds some extra uh, stability here to the reconstruction and gives you a nice hearty layer on the uh, nasal side of the dural defect. We went ahead and do that. And it did that in two layers, uh, followed by a fat graft, as you can see here. That does a number of things, including helping prevent CSF leak as well as uh, helping to prevent a uh, encephalocele postoperatively. Then after that's in place, we are here we are rotating our, our uh, right inferior turbinate flap into place, as you can see here. Once again, a little bit more of a limited uh, reach as compared to a nasal septal flap. But for these dural defects, it can work out uh, very nicely, placing some Surticel here on the edges and uh, a little bit of uh, tissue glue over top of it on the edges, as you can see here. Then we'll pack that in with some gel foam and some nasal pour. When dealing with transclival dural defects, it's important to think about a multi-layer reconstruction and strong consideration should be given to a fasciolata inlay. Fat grafts are also important. Inferior turbinate flaps are a nice salvage option when the nasal septal flap is not available. It's important to raise this in a proper plane 
and to avoid tears in the mucosa, especially around the difficult uh, inferior turbinate bone uh, to uh, dissect this area. It's of course important to make sure that your arch of rotation uh, can cover the defect in its entirety and reconstruct this area uh, to prevent a postoperative CSF leak.